Every week, more than 100 babies die just before, during or soon after birth. In this film, we'll meet two mothers, both called Lauren, who've been through this devastating experience. They've taken the courageous step of sharing their stories, to help other families understand that babies can die, and to help parents find the support they need. Lauren Petrie lost a baby girl, Jada, at the end of her pregnancy. When she died, I wanted to talk about it all the time, but I felt like I was almost being a burden, and I didn't want people to see me as the woman that just wanted to talk about her child that had died all the time. But I think when you're grieving, some people don't want to talk about it, and I get that, but I felt like I needed to talk about it a lot. And almost I wanted to talk about it because it was making other people aware of it, because it could happen to their sister or their mum or whoever. And so by talking about it, it was raising awareness. I want to take part in this video and this campaign because I lost my son. Um, and it was quite unexpected when I was pregnant with him. So I want to try and raise as much awareness as that as I can. Lauren Wearmouth and her partner Craig were excited about starting a family and the pregnancy seemed to go smoothly. They attended all the appointments fine. Um, the, his growth was fine. He was, my bump was lovely. Everything was on track. Um, I was getting on for 15th of October was my due date. But on the day they came into hospital for the birth, the baby died. The couple were devastated. My, my knowledge of stillbirth or that babies could die at so late in the pregnancy it just was very... I didn't even think that, that that was possible. I thought, you know, you have your 20-week scan, which is where you test, you look for any anomalies and things. And if that's fine, then your pregnancy's fine. That was my knowledge of it. Lauren Petrie was pregnant for the second time. Her daughter Mia was seven and excited about becoming a big sister. I woke up that morning um, and I felt her kicking. We had a cuddle in bed with Mia. And then it, you kind of get into the school run. I wasn't as aware of it and I'm not sure, I couldn't say for sure if I had reduced movement or not. Um, but it was when I was sitting in the assembly that my labour started and I knew instantly that something wasn't right because I was getting contractions probably every minute. When Lauren got to hospital, she discovered her baby had died. She came out and there was just no sound, no movement. For an instant, I felt almost disjointed from her. And the midwife said, come on, this is your baby, and I know that you want to hold her. And I said, yeah, I do. The shock of a stillbirth can be hard to process. For many parents, holding and spending time with their baby is an important part of their journey. So we, we got to spend as much time as we wanted with him and just hold him. We, we got quite a lot of photographs taken with him. Other parents decide they don't want to hold or see their baby and it's important to do what feels right for you. Every parent copes differently with losing a baby and moving forward takes courage. You've carried a baby for nine months. You are a mother. Um, but to not mother a child, it's just... Nothing I can explain. It's so isolating because it's not something that people talk about. Nobody knows your experience. It's not that I'm flippant or I'm over it or anything like that. I've just been able to accept it because I don't, the, the alternative of not being able to accept it scares me. I don't ever want to live feeling sad. And I've got Mia to think about as well, so I need to be able to be positive and move on with things. Lauren and Craig became pregnant again soon after and now have a healthy baby girl. Lauren Petrie's experience gave her the resolve to achieve a personal ambition. So after having Jada, my mum said to me, you know, you wanted to be a midwife, you've now seen both sides of it, a live birth and a stillbirth. It's going to help you to give more to the people that you're looking after. Now I'm studying, I'm in my first year. In these two cases, the cause of the tragedy was never fully known. But there are some things that are known to put babies at higher risk of stillbirth. 
In the rest of the films in the Our Chance series, you'll find lots more information about how to avoid these risks by going to your appointments, looking out for symptoms of conditions that can cause harm to you and your baby, and making choices that give you and your baby the best chance of a healthy start. I know as a student midwife you give out so much information to mums and sometimes it can be overwhelming because you're just piled full of leaflets like Leaflet City. Um, but actually if you read those leaflets, if you watch videos online about people's stories, about awareness, things that are healthy in pregnancy and things that you should look out for like reduced movement or smoking risks or alcohol risks, all those things are also relevant to you and you shouldn't always think, you know, I'm fine, I'm young. I'm fit, I'm healthy, which is what I thought, and that you're almost, that doesn't count for you because it's for somebody else. It can happen to anybody. If you lose a baby, your midwife and obstetrician will offer support. Your hospital may have bereavement groups and counselling available, both at the time and if you get pregnant again.